Yes, sir. We are ready. You can go ahead and begin. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and get started. I would like to take an opportunity to, to welcome everybody to this ordination service of Pastor Alphonse. Washaka gufata uyu mwanya ngo ashimire abantu bose baje muri bibirori bya Pastor Alphonse. I would like to thank you for allowing us to be a part of this very special service. Gukanda abashimira kuba mwafashe uyu mwanya kugira ngo muze muri service. And several years ago, Philippe and I began to pray about a mission trip. And it was exciting to know that this year we were going to finally get to come down there. It saddened me that physically I wasn't able to make the trip. But I am honored to get to be a part of this service uh, through technology. So again, welcome to everybody. And also I would like to take a moment to welcome the, uh, to say hello to the First Baptist West Mission team. Okay. Okay, well, let's start with the opening up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we come to you and we thank you for this time. On this very special occasion, to be together uh, with these people and to worship your name and to be a part of this ordination service. We ask for your presence to be with us. And for your spirit to settle into our lives. And we pray, Father, for the pastor. That as we ordain him here today. That he would understand the, the role that you have given him. And that you would bless him and his family. And Father, just continue to guide him and strengthen him. And bless his ministry in this church. We pray that the church would follow his leadership. And join in with him, Father, in his ministry. So just again, thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask that you be honored and glorified through it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I think we have a couple of songs that we're about to have presented to us. We are going to sing this, uh, two songs, and then you will take over. Thank, thank you. Why?
हेलो तो न्यू मेर आज हेलो पता नहीं हेलो Yeah, can you hear? Hello. Us? Yes, can you hear us? We can hear you. Yes, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. So you can hear us. So in the sound of this, you cannot hear us well. Yes. Okay. This is. I can hear you. This is that. You can hear me. Okay. That one's. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Now is the time that Innocent Gabonziza is going to introduce himself and then talk about pastor. Yes. All right. So let, let, let's go ahead with the pastoral testimony now. Yes. So this is Gabonziza, but he, he will be telling the congregation. So I will be interpreting for him. Okay. Very good. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, his name is Ngawunziza Inosa. He's from Uruhuha, here in Bugesera. He said that he is 64 years old, he is married, he four children. But most important, he is a friend of this church. He has been, he, he, made, he made me. He think it was year 2028. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, 2018, not 
Since then, although we don't live it together, but we continue to be friends. To the point in 2020, he did not just be my friend, but he was also a friend of the church. Even those who are in the committee for the church, he is a part of it and his wife. Here he feels home and his home. So he's not going to say too much. Let's get to the point. It's, uh, he did not become a friend of me and the, and the church. The year 2018, also he has met the godly man, Alphonse. This pastor has been known him since 2018. He and his family. Since they've been together, they've been friends, nothing wrong happened, and they are still friends. In the year 2021, the leadership of this church requested his help. But because of the other duties he had, he couldn't. He's thankful to be able to be here for Alphonse. He did not even pray for coming here. That was kind of his primary duty. He did not take him a long time. He just told his wife and they said yes. They did not even meet him at home. He said they met him at work. So he told them they were willing to help this church, but because of their duties, he asked them to be able to do that for him. And there was one problem. This church trusted him. And also he trusted Alphonse and his family. What happened next? So he became a mediator between us and Alphonse. So he told us, although he was willing to help us with his duties, he couldn't, but he found Alphonse. He thanked God for what, who he trusted, and we also trusted. And he thanked God because God trusted our phones before even we have thought about it. Let me tell you one thing between me and our phones. <laughs> I'm so sick. Yeah. Oh. He told Alphonse that you had the problem. You married a daughter of preacher. And he said, you will be a pastor. You like or not, you will be a pastor. And the same the people, they do not give a bad luck, but what he wished for him, if fun is happening, we trusted him and also he trusted the God so he became uh, he became a mediator between us and him knowing all of us we are here and he believes that since he's been here 2021, 
I'm sorry. Oh, he's saying, is anybody here who can say that we did not, we, we did not give this church the right person? Those who who said that he need he he should be a pastor of this church, let them show with their hands. We want to see those hands. We trust him and God also trusts him for this duty. What can keep him from obeying a leader for this church? Let him conclude this way. We are going to pray for him, for even anything may be on his, on, on his way, on the way. So. And we are praying that God continue to be with him to the level he meant him to be. And we trust that. The one who trusts him to this day, he will be with him even to reach something farther. We wish him a good work. He and his family. And what he has in him, if he conducts those duties right, we help this tour, this church to move forward. He thanked me also as the founder of this church for trusting him because I've trusted in Osa who gave me who gave him to me. So he thank God that we work together is his his family members. So he just wants us to work together with the pastor Alphonse, us and the church. All of us will help him to complete his duties. Now he presents him publicly that God will use him to move this church forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pastor, are you there? Yes, sir. We are ready. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Go ahead. Now is, is your turn. Okay. Sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to, again, thank you for allowing me to uh, be a part of this service today. He's happy to be a part. Of, he, uh, just a second. He said that, Arabuza ngo yishim yekuba. Uh, and I thought I had a tough job just preaching, but Philippe has to preach two sermons today, apparently. He said that I have gone to go to the house. I go to myself. One of the things happens is I get to talking pretty quickly, Philippe, so you're going to have to tell me to slow down if I get going too fast. Okay. Ye Yes, sir. I will just just say short, short sentences so I can keep up with. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. All right. But, you, but you've been around me, man. You know I can get wild and crazy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. All right. So let me go ahead and begin. We're going to be reading out of Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through five. <laughs> And there's two main things that I think that the Pastor Alphonse will need to know. And that as he begins his pastoral ministry there at the church. And so we're going to focus on those today during my message. Second Timothy chapter 4, let's begin to read there. Oh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. 
ibice bine umurongo wa mbere starting at verse 1 the apostle paul is writing to timothy a young pastor did you say second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 through 5 okay verse uh umurongo wa mbere kugeza ku yes sir Okay, let's go ahead and we'll read God's word here very quickly. Yeah. Paul writes here, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When the good to enjoy a mumasu ye mana, no me a Christo, yes, was a chiro iteka, abazimanawa puye, ugazawonica, ajo quimingo maye. He says here, who will judge the living and the dead and his appearing of his kingdom preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap upon themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to ta- for fables but be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry okay i'm going to read yes ndagutongera mu maso y'Imana no mu ya Kristo Yesu uzacira ho iteka abazima nabapfuye ubwazaboneka aje kwima ingoma ye ubwiriza ubwiriza abantu cyo kurya imana ugira umwete mu gihe kikugwiye no mu kidakwiye uhane uteshe ubugure ufite kwihangana kose no kwicisha bugufi uko igihe kizaza batazihanganira inyigisho nzima aho kuko matwi yabo azaba abarya yifuza kumva ibibanezeza bazigwiriza abigisha bahuje nira iryabo kandi baziziba matwi ngo batumva kuri bazayoba bakurikiza imigani y'ibinyoma ariko wowe wowe ho wirinde muri byose wemere kurengana ukora umurimo w'umubwiriza w'utumwa bwiza usohoza umurimo wose wawe wo kugabura iby'Imana amen i finished the reading sir okay thank you So what we see here in this text is the very beginning Paul is writing to Timothy. And it's funny because Paul is at the near the end of his ministry. And Timothy was just beginning his ministry. And I think it's ironic is that I've been doing this for many years and I am coming to what might be closer and closer to the end of my ministry. And Pastor Alphonse is now beginning his ministry. Pastor Alphonse now we watangiye umurimo wivuga wibiriza butumwa. And Paul begins chapter 4 with the words I charge you. Ngo Paul yatangiye mu gice cyakana vuga ngo ndagushinze. So to Pastor Alphonse that is my job today is to give you the same charge that Paul gave to Timothy. Go pastor Alphonse, uri ya pastor Herod and her pastor wana wakuhai zen shingano onuko Paolo ya zeha itimoteo. And this is the focus of a young preacher or a pastor which is a noble calling for you. Ili njibi ngo numurimo umu unu uchiri muto ya mubutunga wali koji nengo ufitu muhati woku vukisha burji maali. And so this is my charge to you but also to the church as well. And so he begins and what I want to look at here today is 
is in chapter 2, the very first couple of words that he says, and in chapter 5, the last words that he says. Just take it, just repeat the past, repeat those chapters. And then so repeat those chapters. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Repeat those chapters. And so Paul begins in verse 2. He says, preach the word. Okay, Muricho Jichachakade, Warafusa Tibo, Jirizisham Burjiman. And so, Pastor Alphonse, every aspect of your life and ministry should center around God's Word. Oh, Pastor Alphonse, So he says, preach the Word, and as you nurture your fellowship with God, and that should be the first thing you do every day. Because you will not be able to lead your church if you do not have a great fellowship with God every day. So the preaching of the word should be your priority. But your main priority as a preacher is as a husband and a father. So as a husband, yeah, the first thing you need to do to make sure that you're ministering and preaching the word is to love your wife. Oh. Ephesians 6.25 Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for her. And as the pastor of First Baptist West, I share with my, with my pastors to remember always that they are a family person before they're a pastor. And they, they should love their wives. But the second part of that, Pastor, is for you to lead your wife. And Ephesians 5.23, Paul writes, for the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. So pastor, for your ministry to flourish, you must first love your wife. The second, the second priority is now as a father. And the thing goes with your children is to love your sons. As says, which book? Which book did he say? Oh, repeat the book. Psalm 125, verse 3. No. Says, Behold, I'm children are a gift of the Lord. I lost you. Uh, say again. 
Okay, behold, children are a gift from the Lord. Okay, go mu go ko avana ari mikisha iman. And is the fruit of the womb is a reward. Go kandi go kubyara kwanyu ngo nibyo bihemu. So as a father you love your sons. Go nhase wa avana ngufunda abana bawo abahungu bawo. To also then be an example to your sons. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 says be imitators of me even as I also am of Christ. So not just to Pastor Alphonse here now, but to the entire congregation of men in your church. But we are too, as ministers, as pastors, put our family as a priority in our lives. And as a pastor, for all the years that I've been pastoring, I realize how easy it is to move the family to the background. But I, I, just like you, need to understand this one thing. If we're going to preach the word, it begins with our family. And that we are to set examples for our families. And all the men of your church do the same thing. And you are their example as their pastor. Because your family needs to be strong for your ministry to be strong. And so he says, preach the word. And do it first with your family. As a husband and as a father. But the other one is as a pastor now. It's the first thing that you do as a pastor is you love your congregation. Give yourself over to your congregation. And, we, and I encourage you to love them well and to give yourself to them. Because one thing you need to understand which you is your congregation needs to know how much you care about them. And as they know how much you care about them, they will then follow you more. So love your congregation. The second thing is teach your congregation. They need to hear what God says to your heart. So preach what God says and not what you think. Your people need to hear from this more than they hear from you. Because 
And Paul says, preach the word, not your opinion. And your congregation needs to know the word of God. They need to know it that you know the word of God. And they need to know the word of God is important to you. And they need to see it, they need to hear it, and they need to feel it. Let the word be real to you so it can be real to them. And then you love your congregation, you teach your congregation, and the third thing about as a pastor, the third thing is to reach the lost. So preach the word to those who need Jesus. Lead your church to preach the word to those who need Jesus. Because in this world, my friend, people need Jesus. So Paul begins the charge with a very important thing here. To preach the word. Then the last part of this text. The very last part he says now. Fulfill your ministry. Pastor Alphonse, you've been given a wonderful gift. Pastor Alphonse, wahawe imano ikome chan. But take it from me as a pastor that's been doing it for 30 years. Go ungurifate kuiwe uvi mazemi nyaka biro irenga biro ngitatu. It is a great responsibility to preach the word and to fulfill the ministry. And I've shared with my congregation many times that that ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. It is not a ministry. It is not a ministry to be played around with. When have to take lightly. So it is a wonderful gift, but it comes with great responsibility to you as a pastor. So I encourage you, I charge you, fulfill your ministry. And fully carry out the assignment you have received. Did not get that? Fully carry out the assignment that you have received. Do it in a way that the Lord would have you do it that is biblically, faithfully, and spiritually fruitful. To fulfill your ministry, you must be true to the word of God. And not just in your body, but in your spirit. Not just in your 
Never pursue numbers or notoriety. Unuka kurichire imivare changwa Beso kuhicha mamare Don't worry about what people think Unuka anga ichishko nibja wa nduba techeleza Don't worry if you become popular Unuka anga ichishko nuka wa nduba wa jama mare So fulfill your ministry by staying true to the word Uwe ukuri nshinga nuzawe Ukuri chije Ukuri kwa bibiria That we can That you can be content Udona wajine ngo ukabije imela And be content with what you have Kani uunyurugwe Uunyurugwe ni chufite Rather than what you may want in life Kwa ukujira ngo Ushache ibiju uifuza bios and if you stay faithful to the word God will fulfill the desires of your heart Because the desires of your heart will be what God wants and everything that you do you call up yourself to fulfill your ministry do it through Jesus if you call up yourself kugira ngo ukore irivuga butumwa ryawe ubikore wizina rya Yesu Paul says again in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 Paul we are with the boy for I determined not to know anything Go, which you do, ye fools and go, ye fools are coming here among you except Christ and Him crucified. Go, 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 miss, be cheat to ye fools are coming here, we may go, no, go, go, Christo, yet to one be way. And so, what your church needs to hear about Jesus? Go, it all over the hour, there you remain, it be in the yes. Your family needs to hear about Jesus. And those around you need to hear about Jesus. And if you are focused on Christ, you won't give in to fear. Because greater is in you than he that is in the world. So do not fear anything. Do not fear man at all. So you won't have to give in to fear, but you won't have to worry about bitterness in your heart. Because if all you do is focus on Christ, then you're not going to worry about what comes your way. You're not going to worry about what you get or what you don't get. And you won't become bitter about the things of this world. And so not only will you not give in to fear or bitterness, but my you will not have to compromise the gospel at all. Repeat that sentence. You Please. will not have to compromise the gospel. You can be bold with the word. And you can be honest with the word. And Paul warned Timothy right here that some will not endure sound doctrine. But you won't have to 
you won't have to change the word of God to make them happy. Kwani ugomba guhindura ijambo ry'Imana ku bakirisitu bawe kugera ngo ubashime so Christ in him crucified. Wa hugo wowe uza uzashire ijambo ry'Imana kuri Yesu wababambiwe watubambiwe. So to fulfill your ministry. Urgose ngo kora iyo mirimo yawe just magnify Jesus. Just base wekane Yesu muri wowe. Focus on Jesus. Gosu shiriku fu utumbire Yesu. Throughout all of your life. Gosu babga of course. Throughout all of your ministry. Mo mini maya yo sa yiku ga butunga. So these two charges I give to you, Pastor. Can you hear me, Philippe? I can hear you now. Go ahead and repeat what you said in the last year. The two charges I give you today is to preach the word and fulfill your ministry. And if you do those two things, then you will have a successful ministry. Fruits of your labor. And one day you will stand before Jesus. And you'll hear these amazing words that we should all want to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's what we all should want. So again, my friend, you've been given a great gift. Honor that gift. Cherish that gift. And protect that gift. Being called into the ministry. High calling from God. So that's why I say honor it, cherish it, and protect it. And then you'll be able to look back in many years from now. And one day, maybe give the charge to another younger pastor. But this is my charge to you. As Paul gave the charge to Timothy. And Timothy had a great ministry from that point. And I pray, my brother, for you that you have a great ministry. And know that we'll be praying for you and supporting you all ways that we can. And love your family and love your God. Let me pray with you now. Father, in Jesus' name, 
I thank you for the wonderful gift of ministry. And I pray for my brother now. That Father, you would protect him. You would encourage him and love him. That you would grow him in the ministry. That his work would be for you. And Bless his family now. Because once he steps into the role of pastor, Satan will come and try to destroy everything that he can. But I ask that you strengthen Pastor Alphonse. Against any temptation. Against those darts that Satan will hurl at him. And one day, Father, he can stand before you. And hear your words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And bless his congregation. Put protection with his congregation. Let them follow his leadership. And we can see souls being saved. Thank you, Jesus. For all that you've done here today. And all that you will continue to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this point in time now, I'm going to ask Pastor Alphonse and his wife to come forward and we're going to now have a time that is very special to the church. There will be a time of laying on of hands with the pastor and his wife. It's not any magical time. But it is a time of encouragement and prayer. I'll ask any of the, I'll ask the pastor. And any of the men who are ordained can come by one at a time. And quietly lay hands on both of them. And Ubasenge,
we will be able to accomplish what God puts in our heart. Because they have other people, we think that we believe that also Santa will be very helpful to his husband. And he is encouraging her to obey the word of God, put it into practice, believing that with that, she will also be successful in the world. There's nothing, there's no other gift that you can give to the men of God than the Bible. So from today, let it be known that our pastor Cox is given a certificate of ordination and he is now going to take charge of everything the responsibility that he God put in his hand. That he is now going to be under, I was going to take charge of every the church responsibility, but he is also going to remain as the part of this church. So every computer that has been in his shoulders is now putting on his shoulders. John is nothing but the shoulders now from his shoulders is now put. Put it the the but what makes it happy is that the person is presenting to us is a person with the ability and the ability that the Lord will enable him to take charge of the spirit. Now I'm going to take a look at the self that the will be taken and every business challenge will be taken good care of. I think to we are going to give a pastor a word after this ordination to address the congregation. Do you hear me? Right, very good. Do you hear me, sir? We are going to give a pastor a word to, to, the, to talk to the congregation. Yes, he wants to speak. Right, he wants it to be, he's going to speak. Very good. Then let's go ahead. All right, go ahead and do that. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. All right, Pastor Dale. You're going to translate. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. 
Akai kongkrasi ini mengatakan pasti. I don't think you need to to be on the mic for this we will let you know once we finish okay. Because this has got me the sword on my shoulder, it's not that easy. But because we have a God that loves us, and the Lord is able to do everything. God is not there that he can, that he, he writes some strength. How we can show it to us? But he is God who is able to do everything. We believe that he will enable us. There are a lot you can say about, you can talk about today. But I want to thank God first. We, we thank God who has been with us throughout this journey. From 2021 up to today. The 8th of Ju June 2024. God enabled us, who has been with us through this work. And uh, it reached a time when people say these people can work, can do this work. We praise God for that. Again, you want to thank the founder of the church. The, uh, the place you see here. Is the one who started the preaching. Everything you see here in the houses on the back. 
niwe n'umuryango we babikoze him and his family put me among the great abantu wenda bataza kuvana bagira ngo namaboko yacu i don't want the people to go home confused ahubwo ni imana yakushije founder kugira ngo ibikorwa bibe i want to say that the lord enabled our founder to do what we can do today And I want to prove to him today that because of the power of the investment and the strength you invested here yeah, you you spent more, more more time spent hours and days and you even spent a lot of money you left your family for some days and you were here and you came and decided decided to serve God here on this capacity i pray blessing upon you and your family then that some people are hanging here they are brothers and sisters who are gathered here jewe The first day he talked with the our founder today the, the very day he talked with him what was the first talk they had he thought maybe this this will not be possible because many people know him as a businessman and he was not friendly with the church business because when he had that this guy had this another vision he thought maybe he's going to be like many others i know but he decided he said if, if uh, my founder what he's telling me he means it If I uh, don't follow him and do whatever he told me to tell me to do or maybe support him fully he said i will be killed he thought i will be i want to be pleasing god but i want to tell you this one of the things he told me He told me that I'm I'm not expecting any gain of any profit from this church. I'm not even expecting any returns money wise. But he said he told him that I will invest everything I have to the last penny from my pocket. So that whatever God put in my heart be put in good place. He again told him He said no cent no even one penny will come from Rwanda that will be sent to him in America So that touched his heart and he he said no no I'm going to invest every power I have into this. He said this is one of the few people can meet in the, today. And after today he stands before everyone here. There's no even a single cent that was wired to him in America. Rather, he sends money every time to support the worker here. Abantu bafite kufundi. Many people look at it differently. Religious or religious? The helping church Yes, the, the word of God commands us to help. One, we have a saying that if somebody wants to insult you, he just chooses an insult. So they can say anything and they, everything about you and the, about the church. But, but I want to tell everyone that we have been serving God through the help of man. 
Ikindi nagira ngo shimire Pastor Herak au Zaina wa He wants to thank the pastor who ordained him. Who chose to, to do this ministry to them. This is not usual. It's not normal. So he first had to take time to trust them. So the trust he bestowed upon them was the one to be thankful to him. And every word that he spoke to them today and over about here, they will never disappoint him. But he wants me also to thank the team that came with the founder. It, 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 this is what you are traveled many hours. But again, not only the hours of travel, but also it took a lot of your money. Again, you stayed longer here. So I want to say thank you for coming. And he wants to say, say thank you to the members of this church. They received him and they, they loved him. Had they not loved him, he was not going to be here today. And he was not going to even be ordained today. But thank you for receiving him. You grabbed him and he has not told you. You found what he told you. You want to say thank you for everything. As he stands here, he doesn't, uh, you cannot for, uh, forget to say thank you to his parents. His father and the mom are here. We want them to stand. Papa and Mama, though they are his parents, those people you see, the good behavior he has inherited from the parents, and even the values you see in him, if you love that, they want to admit it from the parents. He remembers one day as he was at his school, every clothes that he had was stolen. And he went back home with an empty suitcase. He only put a branch so that it doesn't look funny. When he reached home, after the after two days, his mom went to bed in seat. And he asked him, what happened to school? Because I had one day I had a dream seeing you crying, sitting seated somewhere crying. Maybe she doesn't remember. But he, he, he sat on the stone and said, If God, you are really God. I don't want to go back and start explaining what happened to me. But please go tell it to my parents. So the mother asked him, What happened? Because I saw you seated on a stone. The mother saw it in a, in a dream, but that was a real story. But he want, now he wants to say, if you see any kind of salvation in your life, or maybe good behaviors, they only got it from the parents. You don't you can see them as the normal people, but they are big in their hearts. God bless you.
And he also wants to thank the pastors. But if you in pastor, in particular his pastor, we told him pastor who pastor him before he came to this church. They treated him well. Even giving him some responsibility in the church. It was because he took good care of the gifts that were in, in, in him. That's why he wants the pastor to stand up so that you can have food. Because they learned from the feet. There are many pastors who are his friends here. Those pastors, it was like a prophet. Everyone talked about him being a pastor. Even a pastor, they loved him. Like Pastor Manasse, we have to come here now. Pastor Manasse, we have to come now. Because at the first he worked, the business he was doing was like a, the business is what I was doing. So that's how they got to know each other. So the Lord told the father that I found my brother. So they loved each other and they even started visiting their home. So if he was to talk about every pastor here, they find what you allow, but they know each other, they have been good friends and they encourage them. Men even went with him to the Bible school. Because people told him some prophecies, telling him that you have a great gift. Had they discouraged him, we want to be here today. So he wants him to end his speech. We love promising you that the responsibility that he is given today. Because he also believes in God who is in heaven. He believes that he will complete every task that is given to him today. He saw his friends, his former secondary school students that he had. They are just raise their hands. Those are were schoolmates. They also called the school with the wife. If you are here, please raise your hand. Those are the people who don't know them well. And they, if they did not did not know him well, maybe if they were not with their friends, they want to be here today. They would not show up today. So he said, "Those who came from Ruha, as a pastor who taught or preached to us today from Ruha." He never invited him, most of them here. Had he maybe invited almost everyone, we will not have enough space for them. But the ones you are seeing here are the ones who are close with hearts and who are more than ready to come. Those are the ones who know their daily life. That's why they are here to them. And if he invited the men, you will not have enough space. Thank you all. Thank you to everyone and even to the visitors. And he said, he will, he will see to it that he does everything according to the word of God that he will say to him today. God bless you all. Amen. Ukurunga ina, kumujenga kumujenga kumira pastor uri pia.
asiye birangire yoteo abazaka binabagireye muzibahe ayita babavuye kuri rai okay yeah senga nona hello pastor yes hello yeah yes. okay he, he just finished his speech and now we can return the thing to you now is you who need, who we pray and uh, end the program okay so we're about to end this up but before we do i'll just yeah. say thank you I would like to say thank you to New Hope Church and to the pastor for allowing us to be a part of this service today. And I want to thank everybody who worked so hard to get this uh, video together so that we could be a part of this. And it has been a great honor to get to be, uh, be a part of this ordination service for Pastor Alphonse. And we would love to continue to, to work together to reach people for Jesus in Rwanda as much as we are here in Lawton, Oklahoma. And again, we are honored to get to be a part of your ministry, and we hope that we can always do that. And hopefully in the next year, we'll be able to have another trip, and I will get to come and be there with you, and I look forward to that day. <laughs> But until then, God bless you and, and, and protect you. And to the First Baptist West Mission team, I look forward to seeing you when you come home. So let me lead you in prayer and then we will close this out. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you thanking you. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've given us. We thank you for the opportunity to be uh, together on this day. To have this ordination service for Pastor Alphonse and his family. And Lord, I pray for him and for his church that you would use them to glorify your name. And Father, they could reach people for Jesus where they are. Protect them and guide them. And let them love each other. And as they love each other, then people will know that you're real. And thank you for the small part that I and my church here get to play. And we're excited to see what's going on in Rwanda. And we pray your work continue there and may it grow. And we thank you for your loving us. And giving Jesus as a gift to us. And it is in his wonderful name I pray. Amen. God bless you all. Hey, Pastor Harold. Pastor. Yes. Are you still there? Yes. On behalf, on behalf of the whole congregation here, 
And the team from First Baptist West, we thank you. We thank you so much for being a part of this. Oh, bye bye, Pastor. Bye -bye. We'll see you Tuesday. Thank you. Bye bye, guys. God bless you. Thank you.